Strike packages have evolved over time. Iran's attempt to hit Israel with a Russian style one is our most recent example. It consisted of 170 drones, 30 cruise missiles, and 120 ballistic missiles. A few of those ballistic missiles actually penetrated the layered air defense system and landed somewhat close to a military outpost. Do we consider this strike package a failure or do we consider it a success? If there was a nuclear warhead attached to one of those ballistic missiles, would we consider that a success? Now let's dive into this. We're going to start with the Iraq war and we're going to discuss how the U.S. used strike packages with Apaches. A strike package is more than drones and ballistic missiles. It has evolved over time, but let's revisit the Iraq war campaign. 27 Hellfire missiles destroyed Iraqi radar sites. The Apaches followed on with a thousand or a hundred Hydra rockets, which knocked out the associated anti-aircraft guns. The attack created a 20 mile gap in the enemy's air defense network which allowed the US's, F, Air, the US's Air Force F-15s and EF-111 Ravens to kind of operate unobstructed. Virtually unopposed, they were able to conduct psych psychological operations with the B-52s that not only dropped massive amounts of bombs, but they also did devastating psychological warfare leaflet drops. Um, and all of this combined really sapped the Iraqis' will to fight. So let's quickly define a Russian-style strike package. It's a shade drone, massive amounts of them, followed by cruise missiles, which are then followed by ballistic missiles. There are a lot of tactics and strategies around this strike package. The most important is the shade drones. Those are designed to basically saturate the airspace, and they only cost around $20,000. They have an effective range of around 2,500 kilometers, and they're basically fire and forget. Now, if you combine that with cruise missiles and ballistic missiles, you have a deadly strike package. Overwhelming the enemy's air defense system is the main goal of a strike package. And then throughout that strike package, you have strategic goals or tactical goals that you want to hit. So you'll send your main force, which is your drones in, followed by cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. The ballistic missiles are more meant to hit strategic targets, such as dams, um, command outposts, things along those lines. The cruise missiles are designed to saturate the enemy airspace, maybe hit certain infrastructure like power plants, energy thing, energy reactors. I mean, even taking out power and then shutting down the Iron Dome, you basically just destroyed their entire air defense system at that point beyond like the jets, which we'll get into later. And then you have the drones, which they're just there to exist. You send them all over the place. They soak up all the main Aero 2s or Aero 3s. Um, they get they soak up a lot of the firepower from the F-35s, their rockets, and then you really have to contend with the main threat, which is the ballistic missiles. So it's not to say that they're not all threatening, but they all have their place, and the strike package tactics can change depending on what your target is. Iran just launched a few things, and they kind of saturated the airspace. A few things got through, and so you can kind of learn learn from that. You learn a lesson, basically, how, to, how you penetrated, what weapon systems got through, where you failed, where you succeeded. And really, like the Russian style strike package is becoming more and more common. It's important to remember that a strike package always has a goal, like a goal in mind. It's not just to launch a bunch of random missile assets at an enemy and just destroy or hit whatever you hit. It's always something, you always have something in mind, a larger target, something you really want to figure out. Things like runways, high value targets, you want to reduce the enemy's air capability, you want to shut down power, you want to limit their air power. I mean, you want to stop the enemy forces from advan advancing. And then you kind of set that on the scale and you see, what do I want to hit? If I launch a bunch of drones and ballistic missiles at tanks, are those high or are those low value targets? What is the strategy we're trying to define or attack with this strike package? So it's, that's one of the biggest things. A lot of people just see the strike package or they see like a bunch of videos on the internet and they say, okay, they just launched a bunch of missile systems and hoping to hit whatever. But in reality, there's a long-term goal, and that's truly what's something that's not discussed when these strike packages or these strikes are launched. I think it's important to note that this event was extremely telegraphed, and that could be done, that could be like for a number of reasons. That could be political reasons, that could be psychological operation reason, regions, or you just need to move manpower and resources into, into a location to conduct this strike. And that's something I don't think a lot of people consider when it comes to these large operations. Think of like the hasty responses that the U.S. Has, has done in the past and then think about how they've responded in the future. A slow, more um, methodical response usually breeds greater success. So even though a few large ballistic missiles were able to penetrate um, Israel, the Israel air defense system, 
that is a success because what if one of those struck a high value target? What if one of those was carrying a nuclear warhead? It's success can be measured by what is struck or even success can be measured by just the ability to penetrate the air defense system. So once you have that hole in your network, it basically opens you up to a much larger attacks or even more threatening attacks. One of the major differences between the Iran attack and Ukraine is Israel's ability to field fighters to shoot down drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. This is something Ukraine has isn't able to do and kind of holds them back, which really limits their capabilities as far as eliminating these drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles. Strike packages have been around for a long, long time. This is just another evolution in what was already a common tactic in war. Think of back to Fort Donaldson, where we had our first couple of amphibious invasions with ironclad, U- ironclad boats. Combine that with infantry on the battlefield. The ironclads were able to penetrate the defenses w- with effective artillery fire, and the infantry were able to cut off, uh, cut off and route units such as the Confederates. Then we move forward to, let's say, World War II. Um, You also have strike packages there. They're more airstrike, but they have strategic targets. We just continue to evolve, and this is just another iteration in the evolution of the strike package. With all these new weapon systems, it's important to know or important to just think of new ways to use them, whether we combine them with drones, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, or if we just have a bunch of ships out at sea. One of the biggest fears, or at least one fear of the United States Navy, is loading up a cargo ship with a bunch of cruise missiles, drones, and bu- cruise and drone missiles, and just launching them at merchant ships. Something that we could like see done by the Houthis, not so much with cargo ships, but just from land. They just continually continue to swarm and just cause the U.S. forces to respond and waste valuable ammunition. At the end of the day, we continue to evolve. We continue to grow. And we continue to, to conduct both combat and psychological operations. Pen- penetrating the Israeli air defense system could be considered a, rent, a, a win for Iran. And it could just cause a, a detrimental psychological effect. And we can see how, ha- and hopefully we can stop them, or hopefully they can stop them in the future as we continue to evolve our air defense capabilities. If you've made it this far, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the video because your support truly matters. And if you like the edited content, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know where I was right, wrong, and let me know how you feel. Peace.